This is National Native News. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. After years of negotiations, five Yellowstone bison have been transferred into the hands of tribal officials on the Fort Peck Reservation in Montana. The tribes built a half-million-dollar quarantine facility to guarantee the bison are disease-free. As Wyoming Public Radio's Melody Edwards reports, other tribes are looking at Fort Peck as an example. The National Park Service approved the tribal quarantine program last spring, but Fort Peck wasn't able to get the bison until now because of negotiations with the U.S. Department of Agriculture's inspection program over how early in the quarantine process they could transfer the animals. Eastern Shoshone member Jason Baldiz is the tribal buffalo coordinator for the National Wildlife Federation. He says it's taken years for Fort Peck to get the bison because people have trouble thinking of the species as wildlife. We've done pronghorn antelope introductions and, and bighorn sheep here on the reservation. And, you know, that that's a, a matter of going and rounding up the animals and bringing them here and, and putting them in their habitat. For some reason, when it comes to buffalo, we have this notion that We've got to bring them in and treat them like cows. The tribes are working to reduce the number of bison killed when they migrate out of the national park. Six to nine hundred bison are killed each year because of concern they'll spread brucellosis to cattle. Baldas says Fort Peck is leading the charge to develop bison quarantine facilities, but that he hopes other tribes can do so in the future, like his own on Wind River Reservation in Wyoming. We don't have to deal with the issue of crossing state boundaries. Uh, It would provide jobs for people here, and of course, uh, buffalo are are important for us culturally. The Eastern Shoshone tribe expects to receive some bison from Fort Peck as part of a tribe-to-tribe agreement this coming spring. For National Native News, I'm Melody Edwards. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources Board has once again voted to pass an emergency rule that puts into practice the new Lake Superior Fishing Agreement. As Danielle Kading reports, the board reconsidered the rule in December. The Red Cliff and Bad River Bands of Lake Superior Chippewa signed a new agreement in December with the DNR for management of the Lake Superior fishery. Scott Bredding with the Apostle Island Sport Fishermen's Association says the deal puts pressure on the fishery with a new October whitefish season. It will not protect the resource because it lacks even the basic biological study. Brad Ray with the Wisconsin DNR says they will monitor the impacts of the three-week season. We will be able to, um, after that 21 days, sit down and look at and get an estimate of how many brown trout were caught, how many coho were caught, and see if that number is, is too high. Board members voiced frustration over a lack of data on the October whitefish season. Natural Resources Board Chair Fred Prane says passage of an emergency rule doesn't guarantee a permanent rule will take its place. The department believes, and I concur, that they will have time to go back, sit down with the tribes, and, and at least voice some of the concerns this board has. Will it modify the agreement substantially? Probably not. Will it maybe tweak this agreement a little bit to give us a little more, you know, ability to enforce our resources and monitor? I hope so. The board voted to amend the emergency rule to eliminate the October whitefish season for non-tribal commercial fishers. A Bad River spokeswoman says the tribe declined to comment. Red Cliff's tribal chairman has said the agreement protects the Lake Superior fishery and their treaty rights. For National Native News, I'm Danielle Kading in Superior, Wisconsin. And I'm Antonia Gonzalez. National Native News is produced by Kiwanak Broadcast Corporation with funding by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Support by the American Indian Higher Education Consortium, working to ensure tribal colleges and universities are included in our higher education system. Info on 37 tribal colleges and universities at AIHEC.org. Support by the Travoy Indian Country Affordable Housing and Economic Development Conference starting April 9th in Miami, Florida. Discounted hotel rooms available through March 15th. Qualifying attendee info at travois.com slash annual hyphen conference. Native Voice One, the Native American Radio Network.